It's time to put heads to bed with a sleeper build. What's up everybody, it's PJ the Great. I hope you're having a super beautiful day. And if you're new here, I do videos just like this as well as ADHD tips. So if that sounds like your jam, consider subscribing. And to all my returning subscribers, what's up fam? Welcome back. All right, so today is the part three video of PC nostalgia. The first video I did was me playing around with my friend Jeanette's old PC. If you want to check out that video, I will link it right up there somewhere. And then the second part was me tearing it down and just having a little PC nostalgia and a little laugh about all the old parts that was in this old HP Pavilion computer. All that said and done, hollowed it out, gutted it out, and now I've decided to build a sleeper PC inside of the case. Now, not a lot of people are picking this particular case to build a sleeper PC in, but this one holds a special place in my heart, like I said, because it was the last desktop PC I used before I switched to Mac. And ironically, 10 years later, I'm back with the PC Master Race. So I thought it'd be kind of funny to build a Hackintosh in here, but I decided that I would build a Ryzen build inside of this old HP Pavilion case. So let's go over the parts. Some of these parts I just picked up just for this project and some of these parts I already had. So let's get into it right now. The first part is I decided to pick up the Ryzen 5 2400G. Um, I went with this instead of the 3400G um, because of what I'm going to be using this PC for. This is just going to be a streaming PC for my living room and an occasional gaming PC. So I thought the 2400G would be good enough. It was only $118 when I picked it up. I could have gotten the 3400G, like I said, for $20 more, but those were on back order and I thought that this would serve me just fine. I actually prefer the game on Baby Blue because it's such a powerful PC, but I do want to be able to game in my living room again, kind of like in my old days with my Xbox 360. I think this would do the job just fine. For the motherboard, I picked this guy up. This is the ASRock B450M HDV R4.0. R probably stands for revision. I got this for $59.99 off of Amazon. And I believe this is the motherboard that they were uh, pitting against the Gigabyte B450DS3H that I picked up for my original Baby Blue build. And a lot of people are saying, go with this instead of that. I didn't believe in that theory because this thing only has two dim slots whereas the Gigabyte has four but I thought this would be good enough for my living room media PC slash gaming PC slash sleeper build. So $59.99 you can't beat it and it actually is as AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. So that is a cool thing plus B450 I can overclock on this. Newsflash, there will be no overclocking because the airflow in this case is really not that good. And I decided to pick up a replacement fan. This is a Noctua NFA8 80 millimeter premium fan. Picked it up for $15 once again on Amazon and Amazon is not sponsoring this. I know it seems like it, but it's not. And um, I decided to pick this up because I thought this would be a better performing uh, fan than the 80 millimeter that came with this PC 16 years ago. So this would be replacing that. And I kind of got like a uh, weird kind of config that I might do with this. I may make this an intake. So it'll intake air into the case from the back. I know that's not ideal, but I think I don't have any other option. We'll see. But I picked this bad boy up. For RAM, this is in the Oiloy box, but it's not Oiloy RAM. This is my old XPG Gamix 10 RAM that came from Baby Blue. I had 32 gigabytes of RAM in there before I upgraded. I'm only gonna put 16 gigabytes of RAM in this system. I, first of all, I can only put 16 in it because it only has two DIMM slots, but even if it did have four, I would still only go with 16. But this is actually 
XPG RAM, as you'll see when we put this thing together. 16 gigabytes, 3000. They could be fine enough for what I'm gonna be doing. And now we need to talk about storage. For OS and apps, I still have my old Oyunki SSD lying around, 240 gigabyte. This is gonna be for OS and apps only. I do have a Samsung one terabyte SSD as well as a diarrhea one terabyte SSD that I could throw in here. But I think this is, I think that would be total overkill for just a media center, occasional gaming PC. So 240 gigabytes should be just enough because I plan on putting all of my apps and games on this. This is a Hitachi three terabyte hard drive. This thing has been traveling all over the place in my bills. It started off in my 2010 Mac Pro, then it ended up in my NAS, and I took it out of my NAS and I put it into Baby Blue, and now it's going into this build. So I think it'll go in here and it's gonna stay in here. So you're gonna have a permanent home now. And lastly, I have this old 120 millimeter fan just lying around. I wanna see if there's a way that I can get this mounted in the front for better intake. Um, I'm not betting on it, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Now I'll stick with plan A, making this an intake from the back. And the last thing is this Raptor power supply. 500 watt power supply that I picked up from my mom's Hello Kitty build. That I said scared the crap out of me, so I immediately took it out and replaced it. I'm gonna put it in here because some time has passed since I put together her Hello Kitty build, and the reviews are still somewhat positive on Amazon with this power supply. There's not a lot of reviews, but they're still coming in positive, so I'm gonna chance it and use it for this build. I have an old Corsair 850 watt power supply that I could use instead, but I think that's total overkill for this build, especially when it's not gonna be on all the time. It's only gonna be used occasionally. So I think this will do just fine. I'm still not recommending you buy it, but I think it'll be just fine in my case. And if it blows something up, to be honest with you, um, I'm not gonna care. I mean, I will care, but it's not gonna be a lot of money lost if it does blow up, but the reviews are, yeah. So I'm gonna try it. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and put this whole system together. I'm gonna see how challenging is it, is it going to be trying to build into this old case. To be perfectly honest with you, I've never been this excited about a build until now because it's unconventional. So um, I'm looking at probably some challenges, but I'm curious to see if I'm gonna be able to overcome them. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the build. So it doesn't look like this is going to be a perfect fit. I thought this was like a traditional micro AXT, but it's not. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six line up perfectly except for this one over here. You can see that there. So to avoid any shorts, I'm going to cover that one up with some electrical tape because I don't want any of those electronics on there. 
to be rubbing against the metal. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take a piece of double stick tape and put it on there. And then <coughs> some electrical tape just to be safe. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but safety first. finished product. Here she is. This is my HP Pavilion 8740N sleeper build and it came out pretty damn good. I am really happy with the performance. Just to give you guys and gals an idea, I did a little bit of playing around on it. I played a little bit of Tomb Raider, the first Tomb Raider, the remake, and graphics were flawless on this APU. I was getting 60 frames per second. Granted that my Samsung TV is only 60 hertz. So of course I'm only gonna get 60 frames per second. And it looked pretty good. It was on medium settings and everything played smoothly. And then I also did a play on World War Z. And for some reason I wasn't able to get it down to 1080p. It was forcing me to play it at 4K, which is the resolution of my TV and it was a little hitchy, but it's playable. So I'm really happy with the performance. I'm sharing a couple of screenshots here of the gameplay. I apologize for the quality of it. The camera was a little bit off. Plus you would think I would know to film 60 frames per second footage and turn on my camera to 60 frames, but I had it on 30 frames. So sorry about that. Then I went on to a little bit of Rise of the Tomb Raider and then that's when I started to see my hiccups. I dropped that thing down to 1080p, low settings and it was playable but still a little bit shaky here and there. But not bad. Like I said, I actually prefer the game in my office rather than my living room. But now having a PC in my living room, a sleeper PC that can game, I think I might be playing a little bit more games in my living room now. So everything is fine, copacetic, and I'm happy with the build, but 
Of course, in true PJ the Great fashion, I wanted a little bit more. So I hopped on eBay and I was lucky enough to find a Sapphire Nitro Plus 570 8 gigabyte for only $100. I don't know how I keep getting lucky like this, but of course I snatched that up with the quickness. Decided to throw it into my 2010 Mac Pro and do a little switcheroo because the Sapphire Nitro Plus is 8 pin and 6 pin. And the MSI Armor, RX 570 8 gigabyte that I had in my Mac Pro, it only requires eight pins. So did a little switch route because of thermals, of course, and threw it in here. And as you can see right there, there it is. This thing's heavy. So I threw that in there and that solved all the hiccups. Rise of the Tomb Raider is playing without a hitch. Play a little bit of Resident Evil 2 on there. No problems, 1080p, high settings. And NBA 2K19, 1080p, high settings. Everything is super cool. And World Row Z is playing a little bit better now. Still forcing me to play at 4K, but it's playing a lot better than it was just playing off of the Ryzen 5 2400G. And since the build, I did do a little alteration here. Hopefully you can see that there. I installed a fan on the side here for a little bit of intake because this little case is a hot box and that not to a fan that I wanted to replace that stock fan in the back. Well, comes to find out that that fan is 100 millimeters and the fan that I bought was 80. So I just threw it down there as a secondary intake. I just put this one on now, so we'll see how thermals are. But before I put this in there, thermals weren't that bad. It was sitting idle at anywhere between 35 and 45 degrees, which is a little high, especially since it's just running at stock. But like I said, this thing is a little hot box, and I'm hoping that this fan here is gonna help tame those temperatures a little bit. So if you're interested in doing a build like this yourself, I'll leave a listing of all the parts down in the description below. It was very affordable to do this considering that I didn't need to buy a case and I already had a power supply and a hard drive and SSD on hand and RAM. And I'll show you on the screen how much this bill will cost if you had to buy everything minus the case. I think this will be a great entry level gaming machine and this is going to have me gaming in my living room a lot more often now. Probably gonna be gaming in there more than I game in my office now because of this. Are there any upgrades that I plan on doing in the future to this little build? Um, I'm probably gonna get rid of that. I'm still a little on edge using that Toronto Raptor, a Pivia Raptor power supply. I mean, I had to use a double Molex to eight pin adapter in order to get power to the RX 570. So I'm still a little on edge. As a matter of fact, I actually just ordered a 500 watt EVGA bronze rated power supply. And as soon as it gets here, this Raptor is going out and it's never going to go into another build again. Um, like I said, don't recommend picking that up, but it's holding its own for right now. It even ran a heaven benchmark and it did it without any trouble. So I think it's just fine, but for my peace of mind, I gotta get rid of it. Hey, if you like this video, do me a favor and give it a big old thumbs up. If you hated it, you can give it a thumbs down, but no matter what you do, don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the bell right next to it so you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. Sorry my videos have been a little sporadic as of late, but the holidays, things are a little hectic. After this video, I'm probably gonna work on my version of 2019 YouTube Rewind, taking a look at this amazing year that I had on YouTube, and then getting ready for 2020 and what it has in store for me and for you. So until I see you in that video and videos coming up in the future, this is PJ the Great saying Audi 5000G. Yeah, I like my little sleeper build. Okay, all right.